Hello, welcome for 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Hope you're having a great week. If, uh, if you're going through difficulty and struggle this week, um, I'm thankful that you're here. And uh, just a reminder to all of us uh, to keep our focus on Christ and let's keep moving forward. All right, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to infants in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not yet able, for you are still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly? And are you not walking like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not mere men? Spiritual maturity is a process. It begins with a humble attitude, aside from faith in Christ, of course. Here we see that they weren't ready to advance because of sinful, fickle feuding. Verse 5. What then is Apollos, and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who causes the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it, for no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Period. Lock it in. Verse 12. Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So the gold, silver, and precious stones represent works of higher value through faithful ministry such as evangelism, service, and teaching the word, while the wood, hay, and straw implies activity that has no eternal value, such as watching sporting events all the time or something like that. And let's remember that this is a post-justification. These are believers. So their deeds aren't earning them salvation, but eternal rewards, as one cannot earn salvation. The fire refers to God's judgment and the worthless activities we participate in that have no eternal value um, and will affect our rewards for eternity. Not damnation, which is why the statement is made that the person will still be saved. Okay, verse 16. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. Another verse to lock in, uh, believers are now the temple of God. The tabernacles of the Old Testament have been replaced by our bodies following the death and resurrection of Jesus and the presentation of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Verse 18, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you thinks that he is wise in this age, he must become foolish so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness before God. For it is written, he is the one who catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the reasonings of the wise, that they are useless. So then, let no one boast in men, for all things belong to you, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All things belong to you, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. So let's uh, look at some of the wisdom that the world preaches to us. Only associate with the well-off. Who you surround yourself with is your influence and points to wealth. That success is found in worldly education, wealth, possessions, elaborate vacations, and personal achievements. None of these possess eternal value to God. Now it's fine to be educated as long as that education doesn't teach against the wisdom of God's word. And as far as uh, who we associate with, 
Jesus taught that we should spend time with the needy, the helpless, the imprisoned, and the widows. As far as wealth, manage it properly. Be a good steward and be generous to others. Completely opposite that what many companies and self-help gurus would promote in our world today. So let us keep that in mind and keep serving the Lord. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hope to see you tomorrow and God bless you. Take care.